Alright guys, welcome back to some more of The Great Ace Attorney 2. So where we last left off, we ended up visiting the Great Exhibit only to leave for another place called Miss Tuspell's, if anything. And her place, or her exhibit, has some pretty interesting sights. So we're going to continue on from there and see how it goes. So I hope you all continue to enjoy watching, and let's keep it going. Alright guys, and we are back. What do you mean by temporary waxwork, Mr. Sholmes? Exactly what you see. I'm part of the exhibits here, catching these criminals in the act. Catching them? Every half an hour, I home in on a different killer in one of the displays and adopt a new post and stare him. When members of the public come for a closer look, I offer them my hand to shake. For a shilling, I'll happily allow them to take a photograph with us. Us? Does he mean him and the waxwork murderers in here? But why, Mr. Sholmes? My dear fellow, isn't it obvious? For the money. He really roared at me there. Very fitting for the House of Horrors. As it stands, I may struggle to pay this month's rent, and I have the ravenous iris to consider. Oh, Hurley. I'm so hungry. If push comes to shove, I shall have to ask you to do your bit, Mr. Nadaholder. What's he threatening to rope me into now? So, with that in mind, how about a photograph? As a special treat, you may have your pick of the murderers and scoundrels in here. The choice is yours. Maybe some other time. Heh. <laughs> Remember, Mr. Nadaholder, ignore me at your peril. And back to being a waxwork again. Is it just me, or did his final remark there sound a lot like a curse? Something to ask you. Well? What is it you'd like to ask me then? Um, actually, it's... It's about Lord Van Zies. Ah, our friend Mr. Reaper. How did you find him? Well, well I trust? And so I filled Mr. Shilms in about everything I learned. About Lord Van Zeeks, about Professor Hairbrain and about the strange coincidence that they had been at university together. So I'm wondering what it was what happened to make Lord Van Zeke such a different person. I was sure that you'd know Hurley. You said there was something going on here in this exhibit hall before, that something was afoot. And that you believed it was related to what I wanted to ask you about. Um, Mr. Sholmes. He suddenly clammed up. Well, is it greetings? Oh, uh, hello. Where'd she appear from? What's she wearing? Could she look any more mysterious? I hope you are appreciating my museum. Sorry, have we... Mr. Sholmes, do you know this... Not again. My apologies, I am Esmeralda Tuspels. This is my museum of waxwork. What? You... You're THE Madame Tuspels? Bien, sir. Though only 26 years young, I might add. Is that significant somehow? I'm a madame in name only. It adds a certain je ne sais quoi. Right. Firstly, I must apologize for my waxworks, or rather, one waxwork in particular. That'll be Mr. Sholmes then. I was led to believe he was a great detective, but he seems unable to settle. Next time you move from your designated exhibit, there will be toil and trouble. Oh! Wow, that was fast. She sounds deadly serious. That's a problem. How am I supposed to ask Mr. Sholmes about Lord Van Zeke's now? Let's not forget what Hurley said before. About something being afoot, right here in the museum, I mean. Yes, I know, but... I'm so curious, I want to know what's happening here. Haven't we got enough on our plate already? Alright, I guess we're gonna talk to her. Did you make all these waxworks, Madame Tuspels? I did. 
I am the third generation of Westbrook artisans, you know. Gosh! It was my grandmother who began the tradition in my family. Her fortunes were checkered living through the turbulent times of the French Revolution as she did. Though that is when she acquired the savoir-faire. Wow, savoir-faire? I don't know how to pronounce that. That leads to the astonishing lifelikeness. All these waxworks really do look as though they're alive. In fact, they look more alive than Hurley. <laughs> what you see exhibited here represents the most atrocious of London's criminal past. All the waxworks were created in the presence of the real people on which they are modeled. In the hours immediately following their executions, that is the secret to their extraordinary lifelikeness. That sounds... terrifying. All walks of life have similar challenges, I'm sure. To carry out one's trade par excellence, one must go to extraordinary lengths. My exhibits are a reflection of society. I create only that which the public wishes to see. Ugh. Why couldn't the public have a wish for something less horrifying? Do not fear. Sorry. This room is the only one in the museum with such a mac macabre theme. I do hope you'll explore. There are models of famous singers, actors, politicians, something for every taste I hope. It was Iris who dragged me straight in here to come to think of it. Sorry, perhaps I should have eased you into things. Um, what's the situation with that? Ah, my temporary waxwork model? He approached me some days ago, you see, with a business proposal. Oh, what sort of proposal? My dear madam, what these sparse exhibits need is the addition of a world-famous great detective. Or words to that effect. Ha. Naturally, I am well aware that Mr. Sholmes is widely known in London as a talented detective. It's great detective, actually. He's very specific about it. Yes, the creme de la creme. So I was keen to come to some arrangement with him, of course. But sadly, we were unable to agree to terms. Let me guess, someone wanted to charge an exorbitant price for his services. For a mere 500 pounds, I will dive into your cauldron of wax this very moment. Or worse to that effect. Mr. Shones might have overdone it slightly with the sales pitch. Regrettably, the museum has a shortage of funds at the moment due to unforeseen circumstances. So we came to a concurrent- not concurrent, sorry. We came to a current arrangement instead. Surely he doesn't need to do what he's doing though, does he? I would think not, but he was very insistent. I have a 50 shilling problem that must be resolved by the morning. Or words to that effect. It's the pawnbroker, that's what it is. He must have something to redeem. Is the consulting detective work not going so well? Alright, something afoot. Um, I wonder, could I ask you something? Vincer, I'm just curious, is anything going on in the museum at the moment? Some kind of incident, perhaps? Whoever suggested such a thing to you? Oh, well, it was... Your temporary waxwork over there who mentioned it to me a little... Oh, he disappeared. A wax model is a work of art, not some tawdry object for trade. Ah. Th there you are. Leaving the exhibit again when you should be working? Do you wish to be melted down? My dear Madam Tuspell, save your reprimands. There are more pressing concerns. The wax can wait. It's our ideas about your current problem we must throw into the melting pot instead. Personally, I would advise you not to involve the police. Why ever not? She's turned as white as a sheep. Because you have at your disposal a great detective whose services you may employ for a mere 50 shillings. So please be aware that I prefer- No, I insist upon payment in advance. Very well. Let us see if the great detective is able to live up to his name, shall we? Before I engage in my an analytical processes, I must ask you to clarify something. What praise behind that curtain? There's a hand there. That is the Tuspel special exhibit. There is an extra charge to see it. 
Ah, the special exhibit in the House of Horrors. They must have picked a special killer then, I presume. Would you be so kind as to draw back the curtain, I wonder? Ah, Absolumenton. Oh, sorry, Absolumenon. There is nothing amiss behind there. Nothing amiss, madam. What about the arm protruding ominously from under the curtain? Ah! I strongly encourage you to allow me to see what lies beyond before the situation worsens. Yes, very well. I will draw back the curtains, but only... Asokong. I don't know if I pronounced that right too. I must confess I peeked behind the curtain earlier. The Tospel special exhibit is a very bleak graveyard scene indeed. And yet somewhat surprisingly, the waxwork killer one would expect is nowhere to be seen. What does strike one, however, is the portly gentleman lying peacefully on his back on the floor. Well, well then perhaps Mr. Sholmes, that man on the floor is the rootless killer himself? I'm afraid not, my dear fellow. He's a perfectly ordinary London gentleman. Not even a waxwork, in fact. What? As skillfully made as these waxworks are, they are always distinguishable from real humans. So, allow me to present my two conclusions. The first... is that the sizable business transaction has been taking place in this special exhibit. Why? Why would you say that? And the second is that the aforementioned transaction is linked to a serious crime. Ha! Ah! She looks as pale as candle wax. I... I don't understand. So, Madame Tuspels, as you've agreed to my fee, you shall now have the pleasure of seeing this famously great detective and temporary exhibit at work. The Great Deduction. The game is afoot. Wax, wax works fate. To begin with, we must ask ourselves what exactly is afoot here in this museum? The answer is revealed by the bundle of banknotes protruding so hopefully, helpfully, from your bag. In my estimation, some 200 pounds? That, that is all my own money. So what does this large sum of money reveal? Ah, not as much as the involuntary glance you cast, it would seem, Madame Tuspels. Yes, the answer lies where your eyes now fall. The significance of the 200 pounds is revealed by the public notice. Waxwork for sale. Your business has hit hard times, it would seem. In short... You sold the infamous killer the centerpieces of your special exhibit for the sum of 200 pounds. None! Now, let us explore the next curiosity with which we are presented. Who is the, port who is the portly gentleman stretched out so peacefully on the floor? It would appear the man has suffered a severe shock. The cause of which is clearly known to you. Ha! Ah. Unfortunately, madam, keeping secrets does not appear to be your forte. What dealt the man such a shocking blow was, of course, the 200 pounds. It would appear that you twisted this gentleman around your little finger most effectively. What are you suggesting? He rashly agreed to purchase the waxwork for the sum of 200 pounds. Only when he came to hand the money over did it occur to him that it was an exorbitant amount he was paying. But the money was no longer in his hands. And the result, the scene we see before us, he collapsed in shock. Yes, the killer in this special exib exhibit fetched a killer price. We can only pray that the gentleman's dreams are not plagued with regret. Sold for cash. Waxwork location. The question that arises then is, what has become of the waxwork that changed hands? Let's consider the problem for a moment. You, you can't possibly... What immediately strikes me about this conundrum is the young man standing over there. 
Who is this fellow? To find the answer, we need only observe the neckerchief. Such as warned by the police as a secret sign to fellow members of the force that a crime is being perpetrated. Yes, this young man is an undercover policeman currently investigating this museum. I know him well, in fact. It's Sergeant John Clay. What are you talking about? The man's quite a celebrity. He received triple accolades as last year's policing awards. But... Next, we turn our attention to the old man sat before him with a particularly unsightly visage. I've been watching closely and he hasn't moved a muscle, almost, in fact, as if he were waxed. Ah, but... but you... Your reaction only confirms my suspicions, madam. I noticed that at once, of course. Observe. The telltale sign that instantly proves whether or not this old man is a waxwork is obvious price tag. It's the obvious price tag, sorry. Thruppets. A tragically low price, you might say. Though perhaps the going rate for aging waxworks riddled with cracks. And yet you sold it to the portly gentleman for an exorbitant 200 pounds. The sort of plucky behavior that's sure to attract the attention of Scotland Yard. Isn't that so, madam? I... I do not... Yes, the last book you sold has already been seized by the police and remains in their custody as we speak. The old man must be reunited with his grave in the special exhibit and not a moment too soon. <laughs> Discovered already. Thus concludes Herlock Sholmes' great deduction of this horrifying puzzle. I see I've stunned you all into silence. You have, Hurley. You have. And you've obviously upset this young lady in the process. Her cauldron looks awfully hot. Um, if I could just bring up one point, Mr. Sholmes. Ah, then the story is not a huddle. One point, I'm all ears, my dear fellow. According to your deduction, then, the special exhibit featured this old policeman. So... That would mean that he's the particularly ruthless murderer, wouldn't it? The killer policeman, Ottermole? Sorry? It was a mysterious series of murders that rattled the capital only last year. The police rushed to the scene every time, only to find the culprit had disappeared into the aether. And it turned out that the culprit was the policeman himself, a senior officer by the name of Ottermole. So you mean that's who the sinister looking old man there is supposed to be? Indeed, it is a particularly grim face, is it not? Unforgettable, in fact. Yes, I remember that od odious countenance only too well. But is 200 pounds a lot of money for a wax model? It would be enough to afford one of the latest steam carriages if that puts things in perspective. S so, it is quite a lot then. Is there anything else you wish to add before I melt you down? That bubbling wax is looking more and more ominous. Ah, uh, the smell of all that molten wax is starting to worry me. Mr. Sholmes did more or less- oh, sorry again. Mr. Sholmes did more or less just accuse her to her face, so... I think I'm gonna have to call on your assistance here, Iris, if that's alright. To make some minor corrections to the great detective's great deductions. Of course it's alright. We'll soon set things straight. Well, let's get started then, shall we? Before Madame Tuspell's vents her anger. Just what I was waiting to hear, my dear fellow. So, Madame Tuspell's in accordance with our agreement. You shall now have the pleasure of seeing this famously great detective and temporary exhibit at work. My turn. Course correction. Hold it, Mr. Sholmes. To begin with, we must ask ourselves what exactly is afoot here in this museum? The answer is revealed by the bundle of banknotes protruding so helpfully from your bag. In my estimation, some 200 pounds? That, that is all my own money. So what does this large sum of money reveal? Ah, not much as the involuntary glance you cast, it would seem, Madam Tuspells. Yes, the answer lies where your eyes now fall. The significance of the 200 pounds is revealed by that public notice. 
She definitely looked in this direction, it's true. But I'm not sure she'd sell any of her waxworks even for 200 pounds. Oh, she must pour her heart and soul into making them, don't you think? Over and above the wax? If it were me, I wouldn't sell them for anything. For that much money, I would. But it sounds like that makes me a bad person. Well, anyway, I wonder if the 200 pounds could have some other significance. Let's follow the furtive glance again and see if there's anything else that would explain it. Alright. Let me, uh... Or... Oh, I can move this. I was trying to see if I could move it around, though. Alright, hold on a second. Oh, there. Look at that. What's that note doing pinned on the wall there? Oh, yes. Let's see. Dear Madame Tuspels, we've taken the prisoner from this room. The price for his safe return is 200 pounds. Have the money ready by noon on 23rd of October. What? This... This is... It's just like the sort of thing that's left behind when someone's kidnapped. Yes, it's a ransom note. Exactly. Alright, we got a ransom note. Then I guess we can try presenting it. Take that! The significance of the 200 pounds is revealed by that ransom note. Quite so, and we must congratulate these criminals on their invent inventiveness abducting a waxwork. Ah! 200 pounds is no small ransom fee, yet you clearly intended to pay it. The model in question has special importance, so I put together all the money I have. In summary then, the 200 pounds you have in your handbag is ransom money. Now, let's explore the next curiosity with which we are presented. Who is the portly gentleman stretched out so peacefully on the floor? It would appear the man has suffered a severe shock. The cause of which is clearly known to you. Ah. Unfortunately, madam, keeping secrets does not appear to be your forte. What dealt the man such a shocking blow was, of course, the 200 pounds. So if the wax, the wax work was kidnapped, where does that leave us in terms of who this man is? We could just ask him when he comes around. I think the point of this exercise is to understand the beauty of the deduction process, Iris. Yes, you're right. Hurley's trying so hard, we mustn't let him down. Well, there's little doubt that he suffered a shock. That much, seem, that much seems clear. But in that case, what's Madame Tuspel's trying to hide? Let's have a closer look around. Okay, let's give it a shot. Let's move this out of the way. Wait, why is her hand like that? This is just Madame Tuspel's right hand, isn't it? Yes, it must be. I can clearly see her left hand after all. Oh, but wait a minute. This is a left hand as well, look. D don't say such creepy things, Iris, please. And it seems very stiff too. In fact, it's really hard. You, you mean, it's made of wax? Oh, looks like we got another thing here. What dealt the man such a shocking blow was, of course, the waxwork hand. Indeed, with a solid waxwork limb, one could deliver a very substantial blow. How, how could you? Oh, hold on a second. The hand protruding from the bottom of your cape. It ought to be right hand. It ought to be a right hand, but closer inspection reveals that in fact it's a left hand. Ah! And somewhat masculine as well. In other words, it does not belong to you, madam. It is the hand of a waxwork model. Yeah! Aha! Some of the visitors to my museum can be troublesome. They meddle with the exhibits and cause damage. So you mean that arm? Yes, the gentleman saw fit to try to remove it as a souvenir. Hmm, no small keepsake. Like taking a whole branch of cherry tree when you go to view the blossoms. I'm afraid I had to teach this man a lesson. Hold on a second. You confronted the man and tried to take the arm back. And the result? 
the scene we see before us, he was knocked unconscious. A point we may need to revisit later, but for the time being, we have our conclusion. Yes, the killer in this special exhibit has been kidnapped. Kidnapped. Solved. The question that arises then is what has become of the waxwork that changed hands? Let's consider that problem for a moment. You, you cannot possibly... What immediately strikes me about this conundrum is the young man standing over there. Who is this fellow? To find the answer, we need only observe his neckerchief. According to Mr. Sholmes, the yellow neckerchief is a sign to other policemen that some crime is underway. A way of communicating with his colleagues without revealing his identity, yes. It's a secret that's closely guarded by Scotland Yard. That Mr. Sholmes didn't hesitate to give away. Well, uncovering secrets is any, in any true detective's nature, of course. Right. Anyway, judging by Madame Tusbell's reaction to Mr. Sholmes' deduction, I think perhaps we might not have identified the man quite correctly. Ah, okay. Hold on, let's get this out of the way. That is odd. Hold on. Okay, cool. Can we look at that arm? Yes, we can. What the? The man has a stub sticking out of his shoulder where his arm should be. Ah, well that sells that then. Right, this isn't a real person at all. His entire arm's been ripped off from the shoulder down. His arm's been... Of course, that ties in with what we just found out. Interesting. Take that! Who is this fellow? To find the answer, we need only observe his shoulder stuff. No such boneless human walks this earth of that, I can assure you. In other words, the man standing here, the young Sergeant John Clay, is in fact defying all odds a waxwork model. I seem to remember it was you who concluded he was a real person in the first place, Mr. Sholmes. He has become quite a celebrity in London, being the winner of no less than three policing awards last year. I simply had to make a model of the man. Naturally, what other explanations could there be? And it was this detective's arm that was pulled off by the man on the floor in the special exhibit, wasn't it? Next, we turn our attention to the old man sat before him with a particularly unsightly visage. I've been watching closely and he hasn't moved a muscle, almost in fact, as if he were a waxwork. Ah, uh, but, but you... Your reaction only confirms my suspicions, madam. I noticed it at once, of course. Observe. The telltale sign that instantly proves whether or not this old man is a waxwork is the obvious price tag. A killer policeman called Ottermole, was it? Was he well known? It was all over the papers last year, but I can't say I know what he looks like. It's a very low price, though. Thruppins isn't much money. Only enough for a few measly hours of gas in Mr. Garadub's delightful lodgings, in fact. So this special killer taken from the special exhibit, is it? The waxwork that somebody stole from the museum tried to ransom for 200 pounds. Is this crusty old killer policeman Ottermole? Really? Perhaps we should have a good look around again and see if another idea crops up. Uh, now we gotta observe this guy. Hold on a second, let me get... I never like this when it's in the way. Why is that leg twitching? L look at this! The old man's tapping his foot like crazy! He seems to be fast asleep though. He's, he's not tapping his foot consciously then, so you mean... It must be a twitch. Never mind that, the point is waxworks don't tap their feet. Or twitch. And look at his arm too. You've seen a scarf like that somewhere else around here, haven't we? Oh yes we did. Telltale sign that instantly proves whether or not this old man is a waxwork is the obvious twitch. Even the most realistic waxwork do not exhibit a twitch. In other words, this splendid old man is in fact a genuine member of Scotland Yard. Slight shift in your choice of adjective then. 
And there you have it. Well, Madam Thuspells? Well, what? It was me who contacted the police and demanded that someone come in the first place. He is clearly fatigued. He is sound asleep. But then, what's this tag about showing a price of three pence? Oh, messed up here. No doubt the price tag of the muffler, which the old Bobby purchased recently at a local market. And I presume you observed the scarf tied around his arm. Does that not strike you, Mr. Nada Holdup? Yes, the secret sign used by detectives to show that some criminal activity is currently underway. Of course, because as you know, there has been just such criminal activity happening here. As she did this from the very beginning, detective. So, it would seem that we finally arrived at the truth. The last work of the especially ruthless killer from the special exhibit has been kidnapped. And Scotland Yard are already investigating. But the Ma's whereabouts remain a mystery. Thus concludes Herlock Shum's great deduction of this horrifying puzzle. Elementary. Alright guys, I'm going to have to end the video here for today. Thank you all for watching. When we come back, we're going to continue on from here and see what happens to Madame Tuspell. But if anything, we're going to end up leading up to trials soon, I guess, as usual, right? <laughs> so anyways, again, thank you all for watching. Until the next one.